I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life. That that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. In the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances. Obviously, I've had some good results in Samarin before winning the Challenge Championship three years in a row. Obviously, racing the Collins Cup last year, having a good race, knowing that this year the Collins Cup was going on, but I wasn't going to be part of it. It was nice to just go back to a familiar setting to go and have my first race back. And there's a chance to win a world title on your comeback race. So it felt like a really good motivation. And that was kind of an easy reason to feel like, you know what, I'm going to put myself out there, see where I'm at and do it in somewhere that I actually love to race. So this race was never really about the ultimate finish position, it was about seeing where I was at. Definitely a rust buster because I haven't raced in 11 months. There's so many things that go into racing, not just the race itself, it's like the whole build up to a race, all the things you have to do with travel, building your race bike, dialing your race nutrition. I knew training had been going well, but until you actually go out and do a race, you just don't know. So. It was never about the result, but obviously it would have been a dream scenario to go there and win a world title on my comeback race, but I didn't almost dare to dream that big. I just wanted to go there, deliver a good race and see where I was at. So I'm doing a long ride today, all on the indoor trainer, mostly so I can practice nutrition easily and just see if I'm comfortable in this bike position and then we can take it outdoors if it all feels right. We should be fine, I've been riding on this for years. So yeah, so basically my day is gonna look like this all day long, so excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, coming in, yeah, flex. I just wanna win, yeah. LABB who we running with, yeah. Um, schnick, schnick. <laughs> gonna 
be a bit distracting there. Two, two, three, three, I'm on ten again. Yeah, state your name. Big bin dope on flame. I just switched the lanes. Damn, he did it again. I just flipped the pain. Stripping and dipping in bass. Slab on everything. Swimming, you sinking away. Cause I got big racks coming. I put my low racks on it. I ain't skip past losses. I had to get back off it. See the fit lab on it until they whip my coffin. Money clip, I tossed it. I heard it's big bags on big bags on big bags coming. Uh uh, coming in. Need to drink that. Keep it on my body, bitch, I'm broke if you ask it Don't gotta sell it, most of y'all is flawless Broken whips is longer than this foreign Heard you want it cause the yams enormous What's in the she isn't gorgeous Live my life, last name of Morgan Freeman Trying to touch a forest, do not know we're knocking on the door is Came in, I came in, I came in Did it like the Porsche's coming in Yeah, it's really nice shit felt that easy Yeah, that's obviously nice so, it's my muscles that are tired. Yeah, well, they're during heavy training. It's going to feel tired, but your blood lactate is showing that it's easy. So, if you want to, when you're doing like that one, just press lap. But you can see it's pretty bang on. Yeah, flex. I just want to win. Yeah, LA BB, who we running with? Yeah. Two, two, three, three, I'm on ten again. Okay, all right. Come in there. I mean, I feel marginally sick, but I think that's just the workout. It's actually such a good five hour ride because you get so much energy out of it. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a long ride, but I mean, I don't think you're going to get sick from it. Yeah, it's just the way it is. These bits the way you're going easy, you just go like that. Yes, yeah, that yeah. what is that over already? Yeah. And I quite like the sprint for this because it gives you something else, isn't it? Although well, they're the thing that's had the most out of you. I found them fine. It's these these longer efforts coming up that I hate. Yeah. Well, I found the sprints messy. Give me the sprints in day. Yeah, flex, I just wanna win. Yeah. LA BB who we running with. I'm on 10, 10, 10, yeah. Very good session. Three and a half thousand calories. No, oh, better eat seven pizzas then. Definitely have a shower, and then have a whole 500 mil of Electric. strong electrolyte, then eat. Oh. Done it. Smashed that, it. That was Brutal. out of order. Well, at least it didn't get rid of it. No, I was. That was why I got the ump. Because I actually, thought if it actually deleted my whole workout, I would have literally killed someone. <laughs> I'm actually really happy with the session. I just have OCD and want to complete every workout perfectly. So when technology doesn't work or iPads overheat from the sun, I get very annoyed. Literally four hours and 49 minutes into your five hour workout and your iPad decides to overheat and you've got like 11 reps left and you know you're gonna smash it and finish it and then technology takes it away from you. That session makes you feel like you've done an Ironman. That's the point. But you've just done the bike part. <laughs> that session is designed to make the bike part of the Ironman feel easy. Ask April. She's done it about six times before. <laughs> she kept asking for it. I was like, okay, you want more? Because she was like. Well, she absolutely to... smashed Roth, so. She uh, did, yeah. She, she said, well, she come, what did she come ninth overall? Ninth overall, including the pros. There you go. That's what six of them do to you. <laughs> oh! Hit flexors. Completed it, mate. I did so much gym work 
to fix the biomechanical issues that I had, reinforce everything that I needed to be a better runner. Then started with walk running, which was amazing because I was back doing some running, but at the same time, equally frustrating. That was quite tough, but once I kind of progressed past that and was back to doing continuous runs, that was quite tough as well because I felt like it was really, really difficult, but I was really, really surprised how quickly I started to feel good running again. And obviously all the running to begin with was just slow and steady but then we started to bring in some intensity only a couple of weeks before this race and actually I just couldn't believe how quickly things started to come back which was why it was a fairly last minute decision to go and do this race. It was never actually on our radar until we started to see glimmers of hope and think, you know what, I might as well just go and race and see how I feel. And yeah, I was obviously quite surprised with how well it did go. So today's session we're going to do a bit of a warm up just around the track and some kind of pre-running exercises and then the main session is going to be a three kilometre effort which we'll do around the Club La Santa Lagoon, then there's a 400 metre easy so we'll just jog around the track easy and we're going to do that three times and then there'll be a cool down at the end. It's not like super hard, it's probably only... Yeah, it's not super hard. The pace is probably just a bit faster than Ironman pace, but not quite as quick as 70.3 pace, so it's like in the middle. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Last time I did this was actually last August when I was in really good shape and I did it in carbon shoes, but today I'm going to see how quick I can run in non-carbon shoes. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Going good or? Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, I'm racing next weekend in uh, Slovakia yeah. for the um, long distance world champs. Right, where are we going? Three, two, one. The last couple of weeks I've been able to do some really solid work. I've been based out in Club La Santa in Lanzarote, just putting in some good mileage, seeing some really solid sessions, particularly on the run where we started to see some speed coming back, which really, really did surprise me. So we were able to compare to this time last year and actually I was almost matching those sessions, but last year I was running in carbon shoes and this year I wasn't. So I was like, this is actually looking really, really good. My form and my technique is better, the toll on my body feels less, my recovery was good after doing these sessions and all of that led us to think, you know what, this race could actually go really well, but we're not going to hype it up, we're just going to see how it goes. Lucy, this is her return from injury race, so I think everyone's just really excited and happy to see Lucy injury free and back out there today. The 
know, the comeback trail of uh, Lucy Charles Barkley. Uh, it's just astounding that you can have so much time out, be so worried, and then you suddenly can start putting in a performance like this. moments where I was a little bit emotional before the race because I was like I need to just take this in for a minute like I'm back doing what I love doing and five six months ago when I was told I had a stress fracture in my hip they said look Lucy you need to focus on next year like write this year off and I didn't want to do that I wanted to kind of dare to dream that I would be back on the back end of this year and so actually standing in that transition area being like I'm gonna race today like let's just make sure you soak in every minute of this and I just had a smile on my face all morning so I think that was just really really positive to know that I'm doing the right job like I do the job that I love so that was really really special. Obviously it was great news for me when they said it was going to be a non-wetsuit swim. We actually were swimming in the main Danny River. So the Collins Cut race actually took place in the small canal whereas we were swimming in the big river which is what I've raced in every year that I've raced there. I was really happy that it was going to be non-wetsuit. It looked super choppy in the water before we got in and when we got in it really was quite choppy. And the elite women are often underway then out on the two kilometer swim. As a strong swimmer that suits me so I knew that that was going to kind of play to my strengths so I just did my thing in the swim, tried to swim as smart as I could with the currents and things like that, just sight to the best of my ability on the way back because I didn't want to lose time by swimming off course. Missy Charles in a category of her own, that is out front. This could be a sizeable lead that she'll have going out onto the bike. I enjoy going through transition almost and being back in that racing spirit. And then obviously I've done that transition four times in the past so I know that it's a very long transition in Samarin and maximising that is really, really important. So I was like, just go as fast as you can through T1, get the bike helmet on and then just get out of there with the bike because if the girls can't see me, they don't know how far up the road I am. So that was like my main tactic. And then I knew on the bike that we were going to have a really strong tailwind on the way out and then on the way back it was going to be a headwind so my tactic was always get to the turn with some reserve and then try and push into the headwind as much as possible and I think that tactic worked quite well because the girls were actually making up quite a lot of time on the way out and then on the way back that time actually didn't come down anymore if anything I pulled a bit of time back. Yeah Lucy's still in the front here she's obviously feeling strong I've been biking quite well in training, so I would have expected maybe to bike a little bit better, but I guess the pace of that is much higher than the pace that I'd been biking in training. And then coming into T2, again, I just wanted to have a smooth transition, get out onto the run course, and then that was really where the question marks were because I didn't know how my body would hold up for an 18 kilometer run and just how I would feel running a bit faster for that distance. And this is the leader, Charles Barkley, back at the big time, back from injury and back out the front leading the pack. Yeah, I just started the run and felt really, really strong. Again, it's a course that I'm familiar with. You have a mix of terrains and we were actually on a four loop course where you do some running on grass, some running on like a sandy surface and then some running on actual pavement. So I really enjoyed the run actually, like I felt so much stronger than I kind of anticipated. It was pretty tough in the beginning because I knew Emma Pallon is obviously such a great runner and the gap wasn't huge and she did set off on that run really, really strong. So I knew that if I wanted to get the win, I was gonna have to push pretty hard, but actually 
the body felt good, it held up really well, and it definitely helped having Reese out on the course because he just always knows the right thing to say. So I felt like he just kept me in completely the right headspace and I felt really relaxed actually for most of the run. Lucy here, she looks, you know, pretty comfortable. Anyone who follows Lucy on her social media channels will know how much she's really put into rehab to get herself back into this shape. And then I think probably the highlight of the day for me was actually on pretty much the last lap of the run. I knew as long as I didn't have like a catastrophic blow up, I was going to get the win. So I could really enjoy that last four kilometers of the race. And coming into kind of the finish, it wasn't actually until like I hit the carpet and the crowds were there that all the emotion hit me of like, wow, I'm actually back doing this. And I've come from kind of winning a world title last year to breaking my hip to then coming back and winning a world title on my first race back. Yeah, it really does feel a bit like a pinch me moment, sort of coming back from an injury that can take a long, long time to mend. I've already had some emails from the consultants saying, well done, obviously, and that I'm way ahead of schedule of where they would have predicted me to be. And I'm thankful to them, but I'm obviously so thankful to every single one of my sponsors who has continued to support me during this time, particularly Red Bull, who have just gone above and beyond to kind of get me back to where I am now. So I just feel super lucky to have all of those people in my corner, especially obviously my family, my husband Reese, my coach Dan, my physio Michael, all these people that have given above and beyond to get me back to here. So. Yeah, it really is amazing to be back. Look at the smile on her face. Through one of the worst moments in her career to being first in the world at long distance. It's almost tears of joy. It's a big smile and it's a victory as the long distance world champion here in Semarin, Slovakia for Lucy Charles Barkley. The comeback is complete and that is what it means to come back from adversity. I think the day went better than I'd anticipated. There's always things that you can do better in a race. Like I'm definitely felt quite rusty on the bike, particularly just because it was quite windy. It's just different conditions. Actually a dead flat course doesn't really suit me. I'm not like a huge power athlete. I'm better on a more kind of hilly course. So it wasn't really my perfect course. Although saying that I've always raced super well in Samarin, so I can't really use that as an excuse. But my short course skills have definitely gone out the window. Doing a U-turn on a TT bike is not my strong point. I'm not great at it on a road bike. So actually trying to do it on a TT bike isn't a skill that I have. It's something I can go away and work on. Oh, and Lucy Charles Barkley has struggled with the hairpin turn to say the least. And as had to put the foot down off the bike and restart and it's gifted the lead to Sarissa De Vries there. I mean, it didn't cost me my race, so it's not something I'm super worried about. I think tactically I raced it really well. I did what I normally would do, but I also kind of just stuck to my own race plan and, and raced my own race. So the run went better than I'd anticipated. My nutrition went really well, which is a big thing that I like to test when I'm racing. I find you're not always training at the intensity that you race. So to actually test nutrition in a race environment and it works is a really big tick. So super happy with that. But the long distance triathlon world champion for 2022, Lucy Charles Barkley. It's definitely given me a big confidence boost to be back at the level that I'm at. Not quite back to my best where I was last year, but I'm back to a level that I didn't really think I would get to for maybe until early next year. So that in itself has given me a big confidence boost. I think the fact that it was a world title race is just a nice bonus. It's another kind of title that I can have, which obviously world titles are not things to snuff about. And actually it was a, a really solid race and a solid field getting the opportunity to race Emma Pallon. I have a lot of respect for Emma. She works incredibly hard. She is a true fighter in any race. I always see her giving 110% and actually she's been in great form all year so to have a good race with her and for her to come in second I'm obviously 
really happy to get the win, but it also was good to see Emma racing so well again. That made the race that bit special for me to know that I would have a really good battle with her. They both had and wanted to make some sort of statement here that they're people that aren't to be overlooked particularly when adversity is thrown in their way. And to get 1-2 for GB is obviously really cool as well. And to fight back and to come back and at the first time of asking to put on that level of a performance. It's, it's genuinely the fairy tale story for her, I feel. So yeah, pretty much what's next is the question everyone's been asking. And to be honest, we hadn't really made solid plans past this race because we just didn't know how it would go. So. I have a call with Jan, my coach, this week where we'll start to make plans going forward. I think my ultimate goal when I got injured was to try and be back for the 70.3 Worlds. I wanted to try and kind of defend that title. So that is my big goal. I'd love to be back there fit. Whether we put racing in between that, it, it's probably highly likely seeing how well my form has come through, but we will probably make those decisions this week. Yeah, you know what? I don't feel like it's sunk in yet, but obviously I have worked incredibly hard. When I was first diagnosed with the stress fracture, I was obviously told that if I'm not sensible with this injury, it could be career ending. And at the time, obviously that was alarm bells. I was like, right, well, I have to be sensible with this because I'm still relatively young as a long distance athlete. I don't feel like I'm at the peak of my career and to feel like it could almost be over if I did something silly now, it was quite scary. So in that moment, I couldn't have ever dreamt of really being back to full fitness. That obviously was my ultimate goal, was to recover and get back to that. But it definitely is scary to know that this injury, if not taken seriously, or if you're unlucky, or if things just don't go quite right, it can be a career ending injury. So you do need to be smart with it. I've worked tirelessly, kind of from the patience in the beginning of not being able to do anything and just being really, really strict with that, to gradually bringing in more and more training and starting to see the fitness creep back. It's been really, really tough. Like I said, I couldn't have done it without the support of the team around me. It's been hours and hours of progress, hours of questioning what's possible, doubters on the outside saying, will I ever come back? And actually, is it too soon for me to come back and race? And actually, I feel like, you know what, we, we did it all right. And at the moment, everything is going in a positive direction. I've learned so much from this injury that's going to take me forward as a better, stronger athlete, both physically and mentally. So I'm excited for the future. And actually, it's been a super tough couple of months, but we've come out the other side and things are better for it. So. Yeah, they always say that the comeback is stronger than the setback, so I definitely would agree with that. Okay, as part of this video, we have teamed up with Ceramics V to do a bit of a giveaway for you guys. So you could be in with the chance of winning a Ceramic Speed oversized pulley wheel aero, just like the one that I used in Slovakia in my comeback race. All you have to do to be in a chance of winning that is comment below your favourite piece of aero kit and why, and we'll be selecting one lucky winner to win that piece of kit. So as always, thanks for watching this video. Thank you to all of you for supporting me through this injury. It's been a tough couple of months, but we're out the other side now. So make sure to stay tuned as I'm sure we'll be sharing with you over the next couple of weeks what I'm getting up to and what is coming next. So as always, make sure to like and subscribe. this kind of injury like I was